Since it's been almost a year since CSGO was replaced by CS2, I wanted to show you guys how many times Valve changed how the configs work in CS2 since it was released, and also explain how we got the desubtick configs back every single time. If you don't know what desubtick is or what it does, I'm just going to quickly explain it in simple terms. Basically what a desubticked movement bind does is it places your input on a tick like CSGO instead of being subticked in the middle of it like CS2. The input being placed on a tick helps with jump height consistency and with hitting bunny hops, but now I'm going to show you all of the ways that Valve has broken the desubtick movement configs and all of the ways that we fix them every single time. And of course that's going to start with the first desubtick method that we ever found, which was actually discovered in August of 2023, before the game was even released. So many players noticed that the default plus jump command gave you a random height, but when you place the plus jump inside of an alias like this, the jump would be a consistent height, and your bunny hops would be a lot more consistent. So basically they discovered whenever you desubtick your jump, your jump just works better. And soon after this was discovered, people tried doing this to every single one of their inputs, and many players reported far better consistency with moving, jumping, and even shooting. And once I heard about this shooting fix, I immediately tried it out in a deathmatch and it felt far more responsive. I instantly took this news to my friend Matt, who had been posting movement videos for about 8 years at that point. This is where Matt thought of the genius idea to record a clip of himself using the shoot bind, and then one without him using the shoot bind, and then he would compare them. Once we started analyzing both of the clips, we immediately noticed that the clip with the bind has a consistent fire rate, but the clip without the bind was getting the audio from the shot with about 20 milliseconds of variance. That's longer than a tick on a 64 tick server, which is 15 milliseconds, which means that your shot could register up to a tick later than it would on CSGO. And to ward away any doubts that this wasn't truly the case, we did the test again, but this time we took both clips with the default bind, and the shot still didn't sync up. So this basically ensured to us that all input commands were broken, and we needed to put them all into an alias to fix them. We were actually kind of surprised that no fixes came around before before the game fully released and replaced CSGO on September 27th of 2023. But at least we had desubtick and we were still able to do movement. This was working great until October 17th, 2023. An update came out that said, command aliases now leverage subtick accuracy, and this broke all of the first desubtick binds. Now after this update came out, it only took us one hour to get a new desubtick jump bind. The fix for this update was to place plus jump semicolon minus jump into a config file, and then bind your mouse wheel to exec that config config file. But if you wanted WASD, crouch, and shooting to be desubticked, you needed to make a new alias like this. What's great about this bind is it allowed you to desubtick plus jump and minus jump separately. This was essential for binding WASD and doing some movement tech where you need to be able to hold jump, ladder glides for example. Now Valve didn't really change much until December 4th of 2023 when Valve noticed that the surf game mode was having issues where players were getting stuck on the ramps. To try to fix this, they made it so that you would slide along any slanted displacement. This made it so that you could float along any flat wall with this sort of geometry. So basically, Valve tried to fix the game mode surf, and they were successful at that, but they accidentally added pixel surfs back into CS2. This lasted until the 7th of February 2024, when they added the arms race update. In this update, they also fixed a glitch that allowed you to levitate upwards infinitely if you found the right angle up against your teammate, and that glitch really deserves a video of its own, but they did patch it in the arms race update. This update removed all the pixel surfs from the competitive maps, but funnily enough, it broke the surf game mode once again. So what happened here was Valve tried to fix the surf game mode, accidentally added pixel surfs to matchmaking, when they tried to remove the pixel surfs from matchmaking, it broke the surf game mode again. But this update wasn't all bad. After almost 5 months of the game being fully released, you no longer have to desubtick your WAS and D keys for consistent strafes and movement. Which brings us to the 17th day in February in 2024. In this update, and for a few updates after, when you did multiple inputs through aliases, then often one of the inputs would break. This made it so that if you were moving with your WAS and D keys, you were frequently blocked from being able to jump. And this especially broke the jump bug bind, which basically jumps and uncrouches for you at the same time, so you can avoid fall damage and stamina loss. Now the way to fix this was to ensure that your alias did not activate another alias. What do I mean by that? Well, because most people are using aliases to desubtick their inputs, if they wanted to do multiple inputs on one key, they would probably make an alias for that key that activates multiple of the desubtick inputs, as seen on your screen. But if you did that on this update, it just wouldn't work sometimes. Now the solution to this was simply to just write out whatever the second alias was doing under the first alias so that it only uses one alias instead of two. That should make sense, assuming you're looking at your screen. But besides the point, the game remained stagnate for a while, 
Valve fixes a few things here and there, but nothing related to movement or the configs. For months and months, it seemed like Valve had no idea what was going on with CS2's movement issues. From player boosting and player collisions being really buggy and at times completely broken, all the way down to the poor clipping of the map's geometry where players would get stuck and it's literally ruined pro matches, I would say. So we were theorizing that Valve wasn't going to do anything to fix the movement anytime soon, until August 8th, 2024, where our theories were proved correct. August 8th, 2024. Valve claimed in this update that they actually fixed the player-on-player -player collisions and the boosting in CS2. Upon downloading this update and loading into a practice with a friend, me and my friend discovered within 30 seconds that there was a new levitation exploit in this update. Now before this update, I had heard theories about how Valve must not be testing the updates. But after this update, this theory was unavoidable. I mean, how could you even argue for Valve in this case? They claimed that they tried to fix the boosting, but clearly didn't even try boosting at all before rolling out the update. And in case if you think I'm being harsh, remember, the glitch was so easy to pull off that anyone testing boosting right after reading the notes would instantly discover this. The glitch was patched after only three hours of it being in the game, but that was only because a few prominent people in the CS community informed the devs soon enough for a same day patch. And since the whole point of this update was to fix the boosting, do you think they accomplished their goal after all of this? Well, of course not. Valve didn't even know what was causing the glitch to begin with. Which brings us on to August 14th, 2024, where Valve added a detection for some new keyboards that have been going viral on the internet for having nulls built into them. If you don't know what nulls are, it's more commonly known as SnapTap, now these keyboards are so popular. And basically what it does is it makes it so that if you're holding your A key and then you tap your D key, it will automatically release the A key for you. But then if you release the D key and you're still holding your A key, it'll hold the A key again, which means that you could theoretically multi-strafe only holding one key and tapping the other. And remember, at this point, most of the CS community believed that CS2 had a cheating problem, not a snap tap problem. If you think that snap tap or rapid trigger is cheating, that's fine. It definitely provides somewhat of an advantage, even if it's really small. But if you compare that advantage to the advantage that someone might get when they're injecting cheats into their game, Maybe we have our priorities out of shape here, you know? Which brings us to the very next day, August 15th, 2024, where I uploaded a video that showcases a config that automatically counterstrafes for you, saying it's better than SnapTap. Aquarius, finding this config quite amusing, posted it on his Twitter and sent it into Valve, where they responded with an office gif. Which brings us to the following Monday, August 19th, 2024, where Valve attempts to tackle these new null keyboards in an update titled Sidestepping Skill, where they also claim to update their AI anti-cheat to its third iteration. Valve made it so that if you were using a keyboard with these built-in nulls, then you would get kicked from Valve servers if you started counter-strafing. And great news, you could easily get a false positive if you were just good at counter-strafing, and it would kick you from the match even if you weren't using a null keyboard. But there was something far worse about this update. Valve made it so that you could not bind two or more inputs to one key in the console. And since you needed to do multiple jump inputs on one key to desub take your jump, Valve basically broke all the desub take configs once again. They also broke jump throw binds, crouch jump binds, and basically any bind that did more than two inputs. In case you don't already know why this is stupid, please observe your screen. Buy this keycap for $2 and suddenly you can do two inputs on one key again. So instead of it being a hardware advantage or a console based advantage, it is now a real world advantage, which is something I always thought the console was there to eliminate to ensure that no one even needs to get a real world advantage because they can just do whatever they were going to do in the real world in the console. So yes, Valve decided to nerf the configs because they were worried about someone getting a micro advantage in Premiere, the game mode where if you rank up past 20k, it's all cheaters. And yes, that means that Valve is trying to nerf legit players before they even try tackling the spin botters in Premiere. And speaking of spin botters, let me go off topic for just a second here. Even after this anti-cheat update, people were still getting permanent false vac bans for using a command called m underscore yaw. Many players who have played for a long time and have encountered people spin botting and blatantly cheating will mimic those movements for fun, to make other people think that they're cheating, to bait reactions, stuff like that. And the m yaw command is perfect for such an idea. It increases your sensitivity for the x-axis of your mouse movement, that being right and left of course. So a few people have tried setting their m underscore yaw to a very high value in the console, and if you enter a high enough value, the game will interpret it as infinity. If you move your mouse with this on, it will multiply infinity times zero, get not a number, and then add that onto your view angle. And since that's not a possible view angle, the game will think that you're spin botting. And if you get reports while this happens, you can get a permanent false vac ban on your account. One of the first people to get this on recording in CS2 ended up getting a $1,000 inventory permanently vac banned, and he's still not unbanned to this day. Even prominent members of the community, such as PogU, who recently had his name featured in the patch notes, still has an account that's permanently vac banned from this glitch. 
glitch. And like I said, this is still happening after the VAC 3.0 update. There's someone I know who had a XP overload streak of 30. That means he got reduced XP 30 weeks in a row, and then he got falsely VAC banned. Not only did he lose 30 weeks of time, he also lost a $5,000 inventory. Valve, please fix. If you have experienced one of these false VAC bans from either Emya or High Sensitivity, please join the second Discord in the description. Not the first one, the second one. Read everything, send your proof, I'm gonna try to get people unbanned, okay? Okay, that's enough rambling. Back to the point of the video. How do you think we managed to make a new desubtick config after they made it so that we could not bind two actions to one key? Well, that's gonna bring us to the very next day, August 20th, 2024, where they partially fixed some of the false positives for null keyboards. But for some people, it was still easy to get falsely kicked for using nulls when you didn't have them on. But fortunately, 24 hours after this awful update, Ruby Rain discovered a new way to to desubtick your inputs and put multiple inputs on one key using 14 separate configs totaling 11 megabytes in size. So to give you context, the entire Holy Bible at 3,116,480 characters is 3.1 megabytes. So it took three and a half Holy Bibles worth of configs to fix CS2. But about a week later on August 31st, 2024, a member of the CS2 community, Pogu, rose again, stating that him and the SteamDB community discovered what was actually causing the boost bug mentioned earlier. So apparently the boost bug was accidentally enabled by Valve in March of 2023, when they disabled collisions between ragdolls and added the boost bug. So basically what happened here is when you died and your ragdoll would touch another ragdoll, your client would think that you should no longer have collision with this player for the rest of the game. So the server would think that you're supposed to be boosted on your team its head, but your client would still think that you're supposed to be on the ground inside your teammate, thus causing the fighting between the client and the server about your true position, which is what caused you to jitter up and down and float in the air on your teammate's head and stuff. So a couple days later, on September 3rd, 2024, now that we finally had steps to replicate it, Valve rolls out an update where they fix the boosting glitch from the SteamDB Discord's research. They also claim to fix a bug related to the jump height being inconsistent. And while it did improve the jump height's consistency, B-Hop still feels awful. And the jump height still gets more random depending how long you're running the map for. And since desub ticking is the only way to fix this, and that's something that Valve clearly doesn't want us doing, you have to bring us to now. September 26th, 2024. Tomorrow, CS2 will have replaced CSGO for a whole year. And I could not have imagined a more turbulent year for CS movement when I heard CS2 was coming out. CS in general, really. Just the fact that pros are forced to play this inconsistent garbage is actually crazy to me. And it's not like these pros get to use all the desubtick binds that we use. They have to use the default binds when they're on LAN and usually when they're playing in leagues. But besides that, besides the overall state of CS2, I am glad that I got to schizo post the whole time, learning how the new configs work. All the modern configs will be linked in the description with updated details if Valve continues to ruin the game, which they will. And, uh... Please subscribe for updated configs. This video took a while and is not sponsored, so it does actually help a lot. Thanks, guys. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Later. Fuck it, speed off in the rain